are these people? Okay. So, I, I, we're not going to be the first. We're probably the latest people the to last. this story. <laughs> yes. But, as always, we try to do our due, due diligence and go through <coughs> and figure out actually what happened and what's important in these stories, if they're important at all, and generally they're not. But we're going to talk about Diddy and Diddy's friends. Um, so this is out of out of Mint Press. Old Alex Rubenstein doing it up. Right, he wants to talk about P Diddy's pedo party lawsuit. Snags another pro-Israel lobbyist, music exec Lucian Grange. Grange, Grange, Grange. Lucian sure. Grange. Why does he sound like an evil like vampire? That's a that's a vampire name. That Lucian Grange. That's gonna be in like some Twilight shit next year. Your watch. So, billionaire Zionist Lucian Grange, possible vampire, is the chairman and CEO of Universal Music Group, the largest music group in the world. But since February, he and his company have also been named defendants in a lawsuit against hip hop impresario P. Diddy, whose legal name is Sean Combs. As one of the most influential figures in one of the most popular music genres in the century, Combs has many friends, yet amongst his closest are an outsized number of influential Zionists. Who would have thought, Care Bear, mm. that, you know, this kind of stuff is connected to Israel? But yeah, Combs course. has been hit with five civil lawsuits in four months, while the Department of Homeland Security raided his homes in Miami and Los Angeles in late March said to have hundreds of cameras inside his properties, and naturally, here's the kicker, footage of politicians, music industry executives, Combs' role in a potential sexual blackmail operation links to the Israel lobby, their shocking resemblance to none other than the man who didn't kill himself, Jeffrey Epstein. Okay? One of the most powerful okay. men in music with ties to the friends of the IDF, you know that there's a friends of the IDF group, like you, you, you can get a sticker for your trapper keeper, you know, <laughs> um, a little friend bracelet for the IDF. Organizations have been accused of financing and attending parties held by the artists, which featured trafficked underage sex workers. Meanwhile, A-list actors Ashton Cunhair and other entertainment industry honchos close to Combs have maintained long-standing ties to the Israel lobby. Oh, the nasty butcher there, Care Bear, who's not a great person, defended his friend in another rape case not that long ago with his wife, Mila Kunis. Um, right. So, you know, just real nice folks. So, and I think some Weinstein stuff, too, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on also, that. also, like, I, I know him mostly from that, that 70s show. 70s show. Obviously. Yeah. And then, who's that redhead? Yes, like, that's the just... one... That's the one that they made a letter for. Uh, the, right. I heard between the two of them are just real fuck ups. Yes. Really. Like, but I think yeah. that guy is a. Um, well, he got like actually accused and well. convicted of shit. The right, redheaded yeah. guy. So. Yeah. Oh, I, who, if you know, remember his name in the chat. It's Danny something, I think. Yeah, you know his know name in the chat. chat I'm sure someone know. knows. Um, I don't know for sure. So. One of the civil lawsuits was filed by Rotten Jones, former producer hired by Combs. It accuses Diddy of sexual assault in graphic detail. The lawsuit alleges an Epstein-style conspiracy. Danny Masterson, Sean Accord, Boy Miller. Um, so, one of the civil lawsuits was filed by Rodney Jones, former producer hired by Combs. Right? So... It alleges the lawsuit, an Epstein-style conspiracy that includes crimes ranging from the sex trafficking of minors, the surreptitious druggings, surreptitious, uh, sexual assaults, and gun violence. According to the lawsuit, Combs freak-off parties were paid for by Universal Music Group CEO Lucian Grange, former Motown Records CEO, Ethiopian Hobtomarium in case in cash to avoid detection by federal authorities. Okay. Now, can I just up there? Like, yes, I grew up in. Well, I was a teen of the nineties, so obviously, I grew up in this era of Diddy. So, but even then, like I again, I'm going to say allegedly, but 
even I, a little innocent me who didn't do shit in yeah. high school and middle school, heard about these parties okay. that Diddy had. Yes. You know, so this is not, this is not new. new. Well, I, I like, find it funny. This is, this is, what are all those Jews talking about when you talk about how they're racist? Well, we've got Ethiopian Jews, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> and you use them for like financial crimes, apparently, you know? So defendants ex ex executed their RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry parroting powerful music industry executives parading at his parties filled with sex workers, minors, and illegal drugs such as ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. The lawsuit alleges, I mean, sounds like a good time, other than the sex workers and minors. You know, um, should have just stuck with the second part. You would have been all right. Um, Mr. Combs had hundreds of cameras in his homes in L.A., New York City, and Miami. Mr. Combs required the sex workers and underage girls to sign NDAs prior to entering his parties and prior to being drugged and sex trafficked at the parties the lawsuit adds. Jones believes that Mr. Combs has recordings of defendants, namely Grange and Habtamarian, as well as other celebrities, music-level executives, politicians, and athletes. That's where this shit is going to come into play, Colin. So he's basically the black Epstein. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so, which is why he left. He got on a plane and like I'm out of here. He fucking got out of there. <laughs> I'm gone. Like he say fuck them kids. He was like fuck my kids. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Fucking <laughs> Israel. You got a home? He I can stay there. He's like deuces. He I don't care about y'all. He went out. <laughs> Grange has supported pro-Israel initiatives such as a fund for Israeli Olympic athletes. As noted previously by Palestine Declassified, and we're going to get to these athletes here in a bit, um, Grains is photographed by a glitzy friends of the IDF Gala in 2016, presumably after making hefty donations to the pro-occupation NGO. According to UK government documents, Grains' wife, Carolyn Grains, also funds several Zionist organizations. Of course. Lucian Grains, possible vampire, also happens to be a close friend of Heim... Saban. Go, Yay! Go, go, Goddamn right. Yes. A, a, the White Power Rangers, in this case. Um, a Democratic <laughs> Party... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Democratic Party power player and mega donor to Zionist causes like the Friends of the IDF. Saban is an independent, non-executive director at Universal Music Group. And last month, held a fundraiser for President Joseph Biden. Um, yeah, another former Universal, that. yep, recently. Um, yeah. So another former Universal Music Group figure moonlighting as a lobbyist for Zionism is David Rinzer, the former chairman and CEO of Universal Music Publishing. Rinzer founded an organization called Creative Community for Peace, an Israeli government-linked front behind the headline-making October 12th, 2023 open letter from celebrities that ran cover for Israel's impending genocide in Gaza. The letter characterized criticism of the onslaught as an orchestrated misinformation campaign spearheaded by Iran. Okay, signatories of the letter included a slew of A-list celebrities, several Universal Music Group executives, artists, and Heim the bomb. So... So stop here. Like, so yeah. this kind of confirms somewhat mm -hmm. why celebrities and these music artists have not said uh -huh. much if anything at all yeah dj Khaled, Cop, what's Cop. happening in palestine because uh -huh. and again like the thing is it, people will call me anti-semitic i don't care yeah, but no, the reality well, is a lot of these yes. a lot of these huge yep. Like we talk, we see the artist. The artist does not make the money. It's these people who are making the money, mm -hmm. and often they are well, Jewish. If we, if well, we remember, not that long ago, Zionist. Yes, like and if, like, if Kanye they know, used and like, the word Zionist, it would have been fine. Like he would have been accurate. Right. The Zionists run the music industry. It seems pretty right. clear that that's partially the case. So right, you know, so. 
so you wonder why Beyonce ain't saying shit about uh-huh. um, Palestine, but yeah. yet her movie premieres, I believe, in is- her movie for- from her last album premiered uh, in Israel like a few months ago. This yeah. is why. So, and I think you might be mentioning something regarding her husband in this. We'll get we'll right? to some of Possibly. it. So, okay. another music industry, industry exec with close ties to P. Diddy, Clive Davis, has collaborated with Creative Community. Hey, Diddy! Uh-huh. <laughs> in 1994, Davis bankrolled the 23-year-old Diddy's Bad Boy Records. Rumors in the hip-hop community of a relationship between the two extended beyond their business dealings have swirled around for over a decade. More recently, comments by imprisoned Death Row Records boss Shug Knight and former P. Diddy bodyguard Gene Deal, that was the dude with the shotgun coming out, if I remember my hip-hop history, um, has thrown fuel on the fire. Both Knight and Deal have also accused Combs of cooperation with federal authorities. Mm. Wondering why this went on for so long. Knight wrote in a since-deleted post on Twitter, People, the rage today wasn't for Diddy. It was to destroy the incriminating stuff on powerful men. End of story. Says Suge Knight, who, take that with a grain of salt, it's Suge Knight. Right? Right. So, so a dude's got his own bodies to deal with. Um, meanwhile, in a recent interview, Deal claims that Combs was a confidential informant for the FBI. Confidential informants get paid good, but Puff was a millionaire. Him being a confident informant, him getting money like that, it was favors. He has been getting favors and then paying law enforcement people for years to protect him. He had a budget for law enforcement. Now something goes wrong, those people got friends in certain places. Then he tells his handler, yo, can you make this go away from me? Uh, pretty much what he says, right? Here, I'll let, I'll let him say it. Crazy, man. So I want to backtrack, right? I want to backtrack to a comment you made earlier about Diddy and how, you know, over the years, he's been having all these run-ins with the police. Do you think the feds took notice of that? And they, you know, at this point, they like, yo, we're going to crack down on Diddy? What happens is, is that... The police will bring in a CI and will use him like she was a $3 hoe. That's a confidential informant. They'll let you do crimes as long as you don't do no murders and stuff like that. They'll let you go around and pay you. When I was in law enforcement, dog, they paid confidential informants, $250 for revolvers, $500 for automatic weapons, $750 to $1,500 for uh, semi-automatic guns and rifles and machine guns and shit like that. Some confidential informants got payment like that. And plus they get 8% of a case, eight percent of a case. So if they bring in about, just say, they bring in a case a hundred thousand dollars. That's eight thousand. What's that? Let's do what's that? Eight thousand dollars. That's eight thousand. They bring in a million dollar case. A million dollar case. That person is getting eighty thousand dollars. I mean, like. $80,000 on it. I think, I think if you're talking about 8%, you know what I mean? So I'm saying that to say this, confidential forms get paid good, but Puff was a millionaire. Him being a confidential form and him getting money like that, it was favors. He'd been getting favors and been paying law enforcement people for years to protect him, you understand? To protect him. We had a lot of people on the payroll when we was doing security. Everybody had, somebody might have this 
this first 10 hours, that 10 hours, or whatever. He was paying law enforcement. He had a budget for law enforcement. Now, if something goes wrong, those people got friends in certain places. Then, plus, he tells his handler, yo, can you make this go away for me? So, any questions? No. Nope. But, I mean, it... I know Savvy has said this, but this mm -hmm. kind of makes the shooting behind Biggie even more sus. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Well, in Pac, too. Like, so, right. yeah. Right. So, a cough, show night, cough. Um, right. You know. <laughs> so, the Rodney Jones lawsuit similarly makes reference to Combs' bribes of law enforcement accusing Combs of threatening to eat plaintiff's face, displaying and distrib distributing guns in plaintiff's presence, bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about murdering people, bragging about bribing witnesses, jurors. In charge of the bribes, according to the lawsuit, was Christine, Christina Karam, who was compared in the lawsuit to Jules Lane Maxwell, she and the head of security at Tums Entertainment, Fahim Muhammad, are accused of handling the bribes to law enforcement and the cash payments to sexual. While Combs' ties to federal law enforcement may not amount to much more than gossip at present, close friend, for over two decades, Ashton Kutcher has maintained a very public partnership with federal authorities. Kutcher is reportedly expected to be subpoenaed concerning the federal investigation around Combs. Until recently, Kutcher was the chairman and co-founder of anti-child sex trafficking organization called THORN, which works closely with the FBI and other federal law enforcement agencies. I've been on FBI raids where I've seen things that no person should ever see. I've seen video content of a child that's the same age as mine being raped by an American man that was a sex tourist in Cambodia. Kutcher testified to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in 2017, neglecting to explain why, exactly, his role as a leader of an anti-sex trafficking operation necessitated his viewing of child pornography. But not even that. Like this, Now, to give con he was a model. So mm -hmm. how can he go from that to this? Money? Like, right, but and then needing a what way to like, about, but right. But what's so special about Kutcher that, um, you know, money aside, yeah, you know, that's just kind of uh, where is, I'm kind of like, the issue huh? with, with charities, this is what happens with them is that they're usually funded by these rich assholes who need a way to fucking have a tax write off. Um, so you know, I mean, what's why that is he show going you on did on MTV? What's that show Prunk? called? Punk. Yeah, that's yeah. probably why he fought this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so the fact that he's been on FBI raids alone, like why? Why? Right, yeah. So here we go. This is his Twitter, right? Just sending out a morning shout to the men and women of the intelligence community to keep us safe and protect our country. Look, look at this coffee mug. You think he got that at the ATC or... You know, like stealing company cups, Kutcher, not not cool. Not cool. So, in addition to his work with Thorne, Kutcher is a prolific investor in surveillance firms. Meanwhile, his pro-CIA comments and frequent musings on geopolitics have led even a reporter at the notorious pro-democratic deep state outlet Mother Jones to wonder if Axon Kutcher is a CIA asset. We wonder mm. quizzically. See above photo. Um, so I, I wanted to bring this mainly because of this, right? Remember we talked about athletes a minute ago, right? So this is a guy named Craig Jones, right? Runs this place in Australia called B-Team Jiu-Jitsu Guy, right? I only bring this guy up because what happens with all these martial arts instructors, Colin? They go to Israel, they train them, they send them over to our police force, they train those guys, right? 
you know, ex-FBI guys, ex-CIA guys, and they just mingle, right? So remember how we, these Israelis were funding athletes and stuff? We're going we're gonna to get to that, that kind of thing. So here's Craig Jones. Where's he going, Colin? Ukraine. Yeah, Kiev, right? So he, here he is. Getting a ton of messages asking, Craig, what are you doing in Kiev, Ukraine? Because obviously Ukraine's a country of war. We just actually drove 18 hours from Warsaw, Poland. First night we're here, 31 missiles fly straight over the city and get shot down. So obviously we're in the midst of some heavy shootout here. It's been very surreal being here, talking to people that have been involved in this war. Very, very scary. I'm here to support these people in the only way I know how, through jujitsu. And I'm not very fucking good at that, but I can strangely sell out a seminar. So we've got 250 people coming tomorrow. 100% of the proceeds goes directly to Ukrainian soldiers that train jujitsu. Any questions? Right? So he's going over to Ukraine, right? And you're probably still wondering why I'm bringing this up. Look, here he is. He's in fucking key, Biden just hit. Fucking like, if I went outside, we'd see the smoke for sure. It was so close. The whole place is shook. I don't think we go outside, bro. No, no. Everyone's just running inside. The alarms are going off outside. Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Can you see smoke? So that's, that's him, his, you know, getting bombed in Keith, right? Look, here he is training, training soldiers. Defense. So, uh, classically, you know, if you watched any, I don't know, like shaving your head that tight used to have a name. Um, you know what I mean, Colin? Especially when you're less melanated than the average. Um, mm -hmm. And especially when you start putting tats all over and... I don't know what those people were called. Skin something. I, you know, I forget what those, you know, we're in Kiev, right? This is probably Azov themselves, I imagine. Um, you know, I'm sure you can find some, some Nazi symbols. But look, look, Colin, <laughs> look who that is. Right? <laughs> who is that? <laughs> look, Aston Kutcher takes the back. Try Got hooks in. No. Goes for the armbar. Right? Craig defends, hitchhikes. You know, he's still letting them try. But yeah, we're in Abu Dhabi, right? Ashton Kutcher doing it up. So, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, right? This is this revolving door of all these ex military CIA people, right? But, but wait, Colin, there's more. You're wondering how that connects to Israel, yes? Well, look, yes. look here. Israel Fight Night 1. Right? This is... This was... Uh, I'll get to what this is, but uh, look who's headlining. Right? We got Noah Lahat versus Albert Morales, Johnny Case, but Luke Rockhold and Craig Jones. Okay? Gra grappling. Right? They were going to hold a little match here in Israel. It got cancelled. Okay, you wonder why it got canceled. What what day is that, Colin? September twenty first, twenty twenty three. Right, right. So you know, uh, just a little bit before October. Um, but <laughs> this is uh, I, I translated this from their website, right? So in recent years, Israeli MMA fighters have broken into the world's biggest arenas, but only a few have managed to fulfill the dream. And signed with the UFC. Now, for the first time in Israel, an organization of high-level combat fights with Israeli production has been established to bring international fighters to face Israeli fighters. Right? So, there's Craig Jones again. Um, so, it, it got canceled. Here's what they posted on their Instagram, which reads, Dear audience, we are vigorously working on establishing a new fighter cart through the recent independent cancellation of the fighter. So the fighters were like, nah, I don't think I'm coming. Um, so, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, you were you were, remember we're talking about Aston Kutcher, right? This this mm-hmm. whole thing kind of wraps it out itself up nicely. So a Saban, right? You recognize that guy, right? Who's who's that guy right there? Oh, what's his face? <laughs> sure. Oh, oh, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. Let's see if chat beats you to it. Someone will. Someone will tell us. Um, oh, you know, you'll get internet points what? if you get that one right in the chat. Um. So Gerald Butler. There we go. Thanks. <laughs> and oh. yeah. So. Kutcher stepped down from his role at Thorn in disgrace last September after his letter, in support of his friend, convicted rapist Danny Masterson, sparked right. massive right. backlash. That the former head of this anti-child trafficking organization has spent two decades partying with a figure now accused of trafficking children at his parties may make for a situation strange bedfellows, but if the lawsuit against him are to be believed, Sean Combs is quite used to that. Look, uh, look, this is, isn't this a lovely quote? Israel is a place that has managed to embrace its neighbors and create peace within an environment that can be very hostile. Good old Ashton. Right. Ashton. Yeah. So, uh, Nuno, Ashton Kutcher is a Zionist shill who directly benefits from Israeli settlements. Just in case you wanted to know why he felt that way. Um... <laughs> Asked whether he has any Diddy party stories in an interview on the Hot Ones podcast in 2019. Who's your struggle? I've got a lot I can't tell, so I can't tell that one either. Who's your said, reflecting on his memories with Combs. Keep it secret. Keep it secret. While the saga of Sean Combs may still be developing, the hip-hop mogul in his case ties to some of the most influential figures of both entertainment and the Israel lobby. Any news to come will surely be a far cry from music to Israel's I see what you did there. I see what you did there, Alex. So, can we go next? Um, thoughts? Anything you want to add before we get out of here? I, I mean, this isn't surprising, knowing Diddy. Yeah, but you know, but it does make sense given the circle of friends. I actually didn't know that he and Ashton were cool like that. Honestly, yeah, uh, that just shows you how much little I knew. You know, I guess I wasn't as deep into MTV back in the day as I thought I was. But yeah. you know, but again, as I said, this kind of proves why music artists haven't said shit about Palestine. Why, you know, we talk, we now joke that DJ Khaled has not said shit, but yeah, he's still ain't said shit. But, but yeah, but it's like they know, and it's like, Mm -hmm. so it goes. I I remember saying this during the um, not the Oscars, it was, yeah, it was the Oscars where people would be wearing like those pins. I think they said. I forgot what kind of pins they were, but they were in solidarity yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of Palestine. And I remember being very mixed about that in terms of, you know, okay. Co-option and whatnot. Yeah, you're trying to co-op. But at the same time, that might be their only way to say something in, in solidarity for Palestine when they can't verbally say anything. Because... Mm. If they do, you know, because again, uh, these uh, and people need to remember these artists, with maybe a few exceptions, don't have any power at all. It's the people who are above them that do. And so, and as we said, not, and I'm not making this generalization, but many of them uh, are Zionists. So if you say the wrong thing, especially regarding Israel, then these are these are powerful, 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 powerful people. Like they will destroy you. So well, and that will be the end of your career. I definitely wanted to bring this up over this like revolving door of martial arts training too, where it's like you see Mark Zuckerberg learning jujitsu, Elon Musk out here trying to learn that shit, right? You see, you know, I I think a they're scared and need to learn to defend themselves. 
because you never know when those pitchforks are going to show up, right? You know, you see them over at Terran Tactical learning how to shoot guns and whatnot, like John Wick. They're trying to do everything they can to prepare, right? Which you should also be doing, by the way, people at home. Um, but, you know, this is like, it's that revolving door of assholes who, you know, they go learn from military people, they, they teach military people, they train the police force, and it's all used against you to, you know, keep your boot on their neck, keep their boot on your neck. Or knee. Or whatever. Um, so. But yeah. Um, well. Yeah, yeah, it's. As I said, a lot of this is not surprising. Um, but damn, Cassie really. Yep. Opened the door. <laughs> yep. <laughs> to a lot well, of this shit. But... Hopefully, we, we aren't demonetized as, as, you know, I mean, we are now, but. You can go to codashv.com slash indie news network, you know, if you wanna you wanna support us anyway. Um, you know. But if you can't support monetarily, you can like and subscribe and share, comment, you, you know what to do by now. It's very easy stuff to do. Um hit the bell. I think that's a thing, right? Right? Something like that. Mm-hmm. Um but you know, we're trying to get to two K. We're we're getting there. 